Namaste, salam, uh, good day to you all, wherever you may be uh, from me here in beautiful sunny Dubai. I hope you're safe. And the most important thing during all of this COVID pandemic, etc., is to look after your mental health. Your mental health is paramount. Uh, right, I've been asked by the lovely people at TEDx to uh, talk to you today about the business of football. They tell me I have, uh, what, 12 minutes, um, which is actually really good for me because normally I'm getting someone in my ear telling me I only have 12 seconds. <laughs> so uh, I hope you're going to enjoy this. I've got my cup of chai here, um, which is green tea. So for the next 12 minutes or so, it's just me and you. Right, the business of football. Where do we begin? Well, of course, the word business. Uh, football is a sport. Business is about money. Now, when I was growing up, football and most sports around the world were just that. They were just sports. The business element of sport and the huge amounts of money that have come into the game has been an explosion that's really only taken place over the last 30 or so years. So what does that mean for, for Indian sport? Well, people are getting into it because they can make money. And that's why we're seeing the development of the game and the development of football, more money being invested into the game so that more money can come out of the game. And that's quite important. And it's important because for a burgeoning sport, and you've got to remember football is still in its infancy in India. And what I mean by that is it's not in its infancy as a sport. It's, I mean, India had fabulous teams back in the 1950s. So it's been going a very long time. Um, what I mean is it's in, in its infancy as a sports business. So um, how do clubs make money from football in India? And this is the $64 million question. And obviously at the moment, the ISL came in seven seasons ago. It introduced a, a franchise model. I'm not a big fan of the franchise model. I really am not. I believe that it's not necessarily sustainable and it doesn't build identity either. Now you've seen football clubs in the Indian Super League who move cities. Well, how do you build a connection if you're moving a franchise and you're moving the city or the city associated with that brand, with that club, with that identity, with that fan base? And remember your fan base is important. So. Um, I'm not a fan of the franchise model. So how can clubs make money? Now, I haven't changed my opinion from uh, this year, last year, uh, the beginning of the ISL, from when I first started following Indian football, which was approximately 15 years ago. The money is still in the talent. And I don't care where you go in the world and what level of football you're talking about. I don't care whether you're talking about Manchester United, Real Madrid, Barcelona. People don't turn up to the new Camp to uh, see the stadium. They turn up to the new Camp to watch the Leo Messi's of this world. So um, it comes back to the talent. Now, why is that important? It's important because that's what we all tune in for. That's what we stay up late at night, especially, especially here. We stay up late at night. That's my helicopter. Um, <laughs> um, so the talent is the most important thing. Now in Indian football, they don't make any money off of TV revenue, TV rights. That's where most of the money is made in Europe and uh, World Cup tournaments, etc. The money is may made off of selling TV rights, number one. After that, it's sponsorship, advertising, all the way down to ticket sales. Now, when I was growing up, match day revenues was the number one revenue generator. It was the number one way that a club made money. Now it's TV rights. In India, you don't have TV rights. Match day revenues are tiny. It's just a, a few rupees to, to get into a stadium when we did have crowds. Oh, I long for the, those days back, and I bet you do too, to get back in a stadium, the atmosphere, the buzz, the energy just flowing and spilling from the stands. I, oh, I can't wait. Now, oh, that's good, a bit of ginger. Now, um, so 
the, the, the main way that clubs can make money, and in what I see, the only way, the primary way that clubs can make money is going to be in talent, buying and selling talent, developing a young kid, bringing him through your academy, developing in him into being a, a decent player and selling that player on for a profit. Now, I'm still amazed that even after the inception of the ISL, player transfers amongst Indian players is still minute. It's tiny, tiny. You go elsewhere in the world and player transfers is a huge chunk of the business, buying a player for this fee and selling the player for an inflated fee. That's where they make their money. So, uh, which then brings me on to a, a topic that I'm asked about a lot. Um, and that is where there is money, there is corruption. <laughs> yes, they go hand in hand, unfortunately. So, but I, I want to differentiate because some people say to me, oh, but Joe, there's so much corruption in, in Indian, uh, the business of Indian football, there's so much corruption in India um, that it'll never develop, it'll never grow. Wrong. Total nonsense. Do you not think there's corruption in football and the business of football in the African continent? Do you not think that there's corruption in the business of football in Latin America, for example? Do you not think there's corruption in these places? Of course there's corruption, but there's a difference. And this is what I want to separate. Nepotism is different to corruption, but it's still a corruption. And in my opinion, it's nepotism that is damaging Indian football and it has multiple layers and multiple levels. So at the very basic level, it's uh, we need a coach for the junior team. Yep, yeah, uh, get on the phone. I'll get my friends, uncles, brothers, sons, sisters, uh, dad. He's got no qualifications, doesn't know anything about the sport, can't coach but he is better for the job and will get the job uh, rather than the, the young coach who's got some sort of coaching qualification. That's nepotism, but it's still corruption and it boils my blood. Now, we can move on a few levels. At the school age, I know of young players, young talents who have been threatened themselves and whose parents have been threatened by the principals of schools that if they go and join a professional academy and therefore no longer play for the school team, their school education and career is in jeopardy. That's scandalous. They're threatening the parents that the child is going to be kicked out of the school, his education is going to be ended, ended <clears throat> excuse me, um, if that child doesn't continue to play for the school team because he's, he's the best player, he's the best talent and he bangs in three goals every single match they play in the inter-schools tournaments. For what? For what? So that that school can win the regional trophy, the regional cup? And it has this big reputation and the principal gets lauded and a pat on the back and well done, sir, and you're the best school. And, and that young talent who in the most formative years of his professional or what would be his professional footballing career is being taught by coaches that are not of the standard that they would be in a professional club's academy and does not have the potential to be seen by the key eyeballs, i.e. the key scouts, to potentially go on and play for Real Madrid. That's corruption. That's corruption. You've got corruption of football agents in India who, because all they see is getting a few dollars in the short term, they would advise a young talent to stay in India rather than to take a risk or to take a gamble and to go out of the Indian subcontinent to potentially not only further his abilities and get coaching at a much higher standard and to be surrounded by a culture of players that play at a much higher standard but to take a risk and take a gamble even though that player may get less money because young players now in the Indian Super League um, and this is one of the good things that's happened their salaries exponentially have exploded they've gone to the moon in recent years and I'm glad about that because they deserve it now 
there's a few elements that need to be to be eradicated from the game. There's still a lot of abuse of players, and what I mean by that is a player that's on a 10 month, I mean 10 month contract, come on. Um, if he gets an injury in uh, month seven, a serious injury, the clubs will look to cancel his contract. Yeah, and I'm talking about a long term injury. Now, one thing I want to finish with is, is relates to you. And that is um, where you fit into the business of football. If there's anyone watching this who considers the business of football as a potential future career, do it, do it. I would love it if you did it. And you know why I would love it? Because um, whether you're in, uh, maybe you're doing a course in uh, marketing, uh, sports marketing, uh, sports media, whatever the case may be, if you have a passion for football, first and foremost, first and foremost, I'll find you. If football is your second sport and not your first sport, I'll find you. Um, <laughs> um, if you have a passion for football and football comes first, then I would sincerely encourage you to get involved in the game. And you know why? Because when you get into the business and you go through the levels of your career, there will be a day that comes, probably mid-career, um, middle management, where all of a sudden you start having some influence over budgets. You start having some control over where the money is spent, where the marketing budget is spent, for example, uh, where a company is going to invest in sport. Um, and obviously there's corporate social responsibility, CSRs now, uh, which are, are huge uh, parts of, of uh, company accounts and company budgets. And it's important because, it's important because when that day comes, I want you to start putting those dollars, start putting those rupees into sport to further the game and the business of football. Instead of what's happening at the moment, everyone who's in that position where I hope you are 10, 20 years from now, the fir their first love, cricket. The first thing they think about, putting that budget into cricket, putting that money into cricket. So it's important for me, it's important for the development of the game in India that that budget years from now going forward develops and that money is put into football. We all want the same thing. We all want the same thing. Thank you for your time. I know I've gone a little bit older. Uh, <laughs> a little bit over. I've also got a little bit older. 12 minutes and, uh, well, 13 minutes to be precise. Uh, that is my helicopter now arriving. Uh, I've gone a little bit over. I've got a little bit older. And I hope you've enjoyed what I've had to say.